Hello, Nicole Steckline, Technical Agronomist for DeKalb and Asgro in Northeast Iowa. I'm standing in a cornfield and today I want to talk about corn diseases and fungicide decisions. So let's talk about that disease triangle quick. So three parts of the disease triangle would be host, then we got the pathogen, and the environment. So corn farmers in Iowa this year planted corn, so check on that one. Uh, pathogen. The majority of the pathogens of diseases for Iowa, corn diseases in Iowa, will overwinter in the residue for the prior year. So particularly in corn on corn acres, but also rotated acres because some of that, uh, that residue didn't break down all the way, so therefore those, uh, those pathogens are still in that residue from the year before. So pathogen, check. Last thing, environment. We have had awesome weather for corn plants this year, as soon as we finally got it in the ground. But we've had plenty of moisture and it hasn't been overly hot. So environment, check. We've got all the things in the disease triangle that's um, saying that we're probably going to have some corn disease. And boy, do we ever. So I'm going to warn you, some of these images may be graphic. So this is one corn leaf. Um, We've got, that's three below the ear leaf. This is the one above it. Lots of lesions. Here's the next one up. Lots of lesions. And here we've got the ear leaf itself, and then above that there's more. So my point is, um, and it's not, this is not the only plant like this in this cornfield. My point is, is that there is plenty of disease pressure out there. So what we're looking at right here on this leaf is gray leaf spot. We've got those very typical rectangular lesions. And we are seeing them all throughout the canopy. Now, gray leaf spot in its infancy sometimes can be hard to determine as gray leaf spot, as we have those little baby gray leaf spot lesions that aren't fully developed so they don't go to the sides of those veins and we don't get that rectangular shape. So here, let me show you. If I was scouting this cornfield, you know, from right off the bat, it actually looks pretty decent. Nice big green corn. Um, we're doing pretty good on nutrients, but as you look up into the canopy, and if you can get some things to be backlit, if you can see the sun behind it, you can start to see lesions. Now, if you focus on like this leaf right here, or if you look down on some of them, when you're looking down on these lesions, that's when they're hardest to tell if it's going to be gray leaf spot, like these right here, because you're not seeing that typical rectangular figure, um, because the gray leaf spot is gonna have those nice sharp edges, um, that line, because it's not gonna travel across the leaf veins. So looking down, it's very hard to distinguish at, as gray leaf spot. However, if you hold it up to the sun and backlight it, you can start to see where some of them are hitting that vein and it's gonna get that rectangular shape. So these are little baby gray leaf spot just starting on these leaves. That's how it looks like backlit. And here's what those spots are going to look like without the sun behind it. Something else that's easily confused with gray leaf spot um, usually, I'm, you'll see these on the bottom leaves. Um, <clears throat> this field has a very high infestation, but these little spots here, so you can see that there's our actual gray leaf spot there in the center, and then it's surrounded by other little tiny little rectangular marks. That is actually insect damage. It's not a disease. So if you see those in the field, know that they are not diseases. That's insects. Typically not a big problem for yield, but a uh, fungicide will not take care of them. Another disease that I'm starting to see show up is northern corn leaf blight. So we haven't had to worry about northern corn leaf blight for the last couple of years, but don't worry, it's still out there. So especially given the temperatures and the weather conditions that we've had over the last week, and what we're looking for right now for the next 10 to 14 days is you know upper 70s to lower 80s um, we're going to be dewy we have chances for more rain northern corn leaf blight loves this stuff so i've started to see northern corn leaf blight showing up and develop so i look for that to continue its current trend 
Um, other diseases that I'm seeing, uh, physoderma brown spot. So physoderma brown spot is very easily confused with eye spot because it has like all those little dots. So the different thing between eye spot and physoderma brown spot. Eye spot usually comes on late in the season and you'll see it in the upper canopy most of the time um, and it'll kind of clump on these leaves and it will only infect the actual leaf tissue. Physoderma brown spot, you'll start seeing that earlier in the season because that infection occurred at about V6 or V7 when there was free water sitting inside that world. Additionally, physoderma brown spot is able to infect the midrib of these leaves as well as it infects it in bands across the leaf. So as it's becoming infected, uh, physoderma brown spot is an oomycetes, which means that it's a flagellated water-loving uh, pathogen. So when we have free water inside the whirl of that young plant, which I know we had plenty of, um, and it needs sunlight to infect the leaf tissue. So you'll see it in bands on the leaf because during the daytime, that little thing was swimming around and infecting leaf tissue and then nighttime would come, but you'd get a little bit of leaf growth. So then there wouldn't be any infection right there. And then the sun would come out and it would swim around and infect it again. So then you have bands along that leaf. So when we think about fungicides for both of those two diseases, eye spot doesn't have a lot of economic damage to our yield specifically, but it is going to compound any other leaf tissue loss that you're getting from the other diseases. Physoderma brown spot, that plant has already been infected and there's no saving that leaf tissue that we've already lost. One thing to keep in mind with the physoderma brown spot is that we also get physoderma node rot or node break from the same pathogen. Now, having physoderma brown spot on the leaves doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get that node breakage. However, it is an, in an indicator that that pathogen is present in that field and that you wanna keep an eye on it. So what is this node rot thing? So if you have a susceptible hybrid out there, um, usually you can start seeing it about now, but that first or second node from the soil surface will start rotting around the outside edge and it almost looks like somebody came in with a buzzsaw and just sawed it off right at the node. Now this is different than a lot of other stock rots that we're used to where you know that stock can flop over but it's all still attached so we can pick it up and feed it in with the corn head. However, with the physoderma node snap, um, it's much easier to recover that plant and recover that ear for harvest. So if you have a susceptible hybrid and you start seeing the physoderma brown spot on the leaves, just be on the lookout for the, um, for the node snap. So we've gone out, we've looked at our corn, we know that we've got high yield potential. So we know that we've got the host, we know that we've got the diseases coming out here, we know we have the pathogens, and we know that the environment is conducive for disease development. So what's our next step in this whole process of deciding whether I should spray fungicide or not? And for me, the number one factor is yield potential. It's a heck of a lot easier to lose the top 50 bushels off a of 250 bushel corn than it is to lose the top 50 bushel off of 200 bushel corn. So we need to protect that because fungicide isn't adding bushels, it's just protecting loss caused by diseases. So first and foremost, I want to check yield potential. Does my corn still look good? Was I able to get a good stand establishment earlier on in the season? The other thing with all the rain that we had this year in Northeast Iowa, I want to be checking my nitrogen status. So if you run out of nitrogen, if your limiting factor is nitrogen, fungicide probably isn't going to pay off as much for you as if you had that higher yield potential because you weren't limited by a nutrient. So be checking your fields not only for diseases and yield potential overall crop condition and your stand, but also be checking those lower leaves for signs of nitrogen deficiency. Also be looking at your hybrid type. Some hybrids will respond more to fungicides than other. I think that's a pretty well known fact. <laughs> and then also take into consideration the other benefits of fungicide, such as stock strength and harvestability later on in the season. Let's wrap up quick and talk about timing. So late season fungicide applications time between VT and R3. So why do we start at VT? Well, Obviously, that's when we're going to get more yield off of it. 
because as we're switching from vegetative growth to reproductive growth, that corn's priorities change. And therefore, its immunity system goes down because it's putting everything into filling this ear. The other thing is that when we make any sort of application to a corn crop, whether it be herbicides or fungicides, making it between R th or making it between V8 and full tassel may have unintended consequences if it's made with a surfactant. So, we all know that ear development, we're, re we're determining the number of rows around at V6. And then after that, it's all about the length. So this is the female part of the plant. So at V8, we don't have kernels, we have ovules. So between V8 and tassel, this plant is developing those ovules so that they are then receptive to the pollen. If we give stress, particularly that stress caused by surfactant, followed by heat and drought stress, it can interrupt the development of these ovules. So if we were to make an application with a surfactant and we've only got this much of that ear, is this much of those ovules are developed, this is all the more kernels that will be pollinated um, when we get the tassel shooting out. So if we make a fungicide application before full tassel, we want to pull that surfactant out to mitigate our risk for arrested ear development. After we're at full tassel, when all the branches come down off of that tassel, we're good to have the surfactant back in there. How about how late can I spray? Usually the latest you want to spray is through R3 or full, through milk stage or about 21, three, 21 days, three weeks after pollination. So if you go out in your field and you break open your ears and you take some kernels off and squeeze it into your hand, if most of it is a milky consistency, it's pretty clear, it's mostly water, you're still in the milk stage. As the corn continues to put dry matter into that kernel, it will continue to get more starchy. So when you break that kernel open on your hand and it's starchy, um, kind of doughy, you're getting into dough phase and then you aren't get as going to get as much bang for your buck off of that fungicide application. So if you've got any questions or concerns, don't be afraid to give me a call, a text, or an email. Until next time, folks.